This is the E Free Lethbridge Podcast. Welcome to the E Free Lethbridge Podcast. Uh, it's the week of May 3rd to 9th. It's so great that you're joining us. Uh, joining us today, we've got the service pastor for the 9 a.m. service, the 11 a.m. service, the most community-minded person I know, Mark Dick. Hello, hello. Uh, we also got the service pastor for the Church at Six service, uh, the Young at Heart, Luke Watson. Greetings, friends. And the Wonder Woman extraordinaire, Wonder Woman. Linda Postman. Oh, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Levi, and uh, we're going to get to things right off the bat with a fun morning question. So today's fun morning question, what's your most embarrassing injury? I've got a really good one for this, but I'm going to hold this over the end. Most embarrassing injury. Glenda, please go first. Glenda. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to say... I have a fear still of barbed wire fences and climbing over them. Oh, no. I'm not saying anything else. Oof. Enough said. All I have. That's enough. That All I good. have to add. Yeah. You know what? Ever since Luke shaved his head, I feel like the amount of scars on his head, he's got to have like a plethora of embarrassing sort of... <laughs> chicken pox. Yeah, chick- yeah, oh, chicken, chicken pox. Never mind. Box, yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I... <laughs> Well, people have been saying that Ruthie made all missed all these spots. I'm like, no, no, these are my chicken pox. It's not Ruthie's uh, oh, like... inability to shave, you know? Yeah, shaving a head completely isn't that hard. Right. right? Yeah. Just... You can do it. Mine can... would be, I, can I remember dancing one time in, in university and, you know, people were laughing, having a good time. And I went up to kick my feet in the air and do like the good old tap in the air, you know, that yeah. and I never got my feet back. And so like people were watching me you know, down and then it's landed right on my hip. And I got up so quickly, tried to pretend it didn't hurt and keep dancing, but I, I had a massive bruise the next oh. day. I was super embarrassed. And there was oh, this, this girl that I kind of liked at the time and yeah, trying to you win her and an, impress you her. an injury. Yeah. That's a good one, Luke. Keenan wow. Keenan tore his Achilles um, barn dancing. Oh, yes, Keenan, buddy. Yeah. And it's Going funny because you addict. think that this is impressing the girls, but they probably are just laughing at you, not with you, you know? I don't think I had a chance. <laughs> I think probably for me it would be like, um, I probably, I can't even remember all my injuries, but probably when I was a kid, like young, uh, five or six years old, we went to the beach for my birthday and um, I was like pushing my mom's vehicle and then she like drove away and I held, I must've tripped and I held onto the bumper and I like was oh, young God. in a swimsuit and like this. <laughs> and so like, uh, like Why? I have pictures of like my arms and my face and my thighs, everything is like scratched uh, off, like oh. the skin rubbed off. Cause you hung onto the bumper. You could let go. No. Well, I, I could, I did probably eventually let go, but not until the road rashed me something fierce. But I was young, like oh, I can, wow. I was young, like four, five, six, something like that. Wow. Oh. Okay, Levi, we, we want to hear it. With okay. Oh, this is so, good here. Do you guys remember the time when like Walmart, Canadian Tire used to have the exercise equipment out and available so you could test it? <laughs> Uh, yes. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah like okay. there was like a whole like section aisle for the exercise equipment, like ellipticals and treadmills and um, also ab rollers um, readily available so that you could test out ab rollers. How do you hurt yourself with an ab roller? Okay, yes. How do you hurt yourself with an ab roller? So grade six Levi um, in the middle of Walmart takes an ab roller after seeing it live on television about how amazing it is. And I'm like, I got to try this thing out. So I grab the ab roller and I go on my knees and I go to go down with the ab roller, like uh, hold it yeah, out yeah. and yeah. I go to roll it back in. And I thought that there was going to be a little bit more like, I don't know, it wasn't going to be so like so much of a wheel. So when I went to go back in, it went in really fast and it, I was oh. still holding on to it and my face slammed against the ground, um, <laughs> the, just oh. my chin. So okay. I hit the, the ground. And initially I thought, wow, that really hurt. Um, and my brother, my brother was there 
um, with me. And I quickly like looked at him. He was like, it's okay or whatever. And I grabbed my chin and I thought, oh, it's just a bruise. Like a really, like it hurts a lot, but it's just a bruise. So we start walking. Uh, we put it quickly on the aisle. We start walking towards <laughs> my parents, which were in a different aisle. And we get out into like the main aisle and a woman sees me and she just screams. <gasps> and I look down and literally all over my shirt, just blood <laughs> everywhere. Wow. I had totally cracked my chin completely uh, open. Wow. And they like, I guess when you have a, a pressure wound, uh, yeah. They can't actually, like, it doesn't bleed right off the I bat. Like, it doesn't just start squirting blood. It, like, takes a little bit, but a face wound, like, bleeds yeah. a lot. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I, we were, like, my mom quickly grabbed us, and she's grabbing me and pulling me out. As we're going out of the store, I'm putting, like, pressure on it. Um, the manager wow. already had figured it out, and he is, like, trailing us and being, like, make sure to come back. Like we have to sign an incident report and like all this <laughs> sign stuff. waivers. Yeah. Oh so my. got to the hospital, got stitches, got back. They gave us a gift basket. They gave wow. us all this stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. like to say story. Next time we went into that Walmart, everything no was locked down. Yep. That's and it, Levi. You put an it. end to that. Now we can't test it. It's the Levi. The reason Fraser why we can't test it rules. is the Levi. Yeah. They no didn't longer. want me to sue them. No longer allowed to have exercise. But there, your face bleeds so much. I remember once too, I, was, I slammed a car door and the window shattered, like the car window shattered into little teeny tiny pieces, but it shattered on me. And so, and I went like this and like put my hands on my face and then looked down and I had blood everywhere. My whole face was bleeding. I was like, my whole face is cut up. I had like 10 little tiny cuts when I washed my face, but right. it just bleeds. It bleeds like crazy. Yeah, yeah, it just was, but the fact that it was an ab roller in the middle of Walmart, it just was so embarrassing for me. <laughs> Wild that your, your shirt was soaked in blood. That's oh, amazing. It, the, okay, the best Coordination part is two, at days its finest, later, two days seven. later, I was running. I was at like a camp. So I had stitches in my chin. I was at a camp um, and I was trying to race someone to the cabin, tripped over a log, sliced my leg open. I yeah. uh, got more stitches. It was like two days later. I'm like, you gotta Kids be in grade me. seven, hold in there. You eventually will yeah. figure out life a little bit more. Ooh, good la- yeah. Look at yeah. Levi. Life we, should, we should get you to ab roll for us to see if you can do it now. Yeah. I don't know if I'll ever do that again. <laughs> His face can't handle the pressure. Ab rollers, let a, like just ab rollers are embarrassing. Okay, that's true. <laughs> well, I think that oh, it's, that it's time to get to the message. So this past week, uh, in in the message, we had Luke Watson uh, preaching for us this week. Uh, Yeah, we got him with us, which is awesome. Uh, And the statement, the I am statement that we were going over is, I am the good shepherd. Um, So this week was about shepherding. And we even got a a tour of uh, the Preston farm, which was so awesome to see the the actual Mm -hmm. sheep and how they totally ran away from Luke. But I love Charlie. Love Charlie. (laughs) um which which makes sense because that's what sheep do she's they know her basically um we'll just cut that a little bit one second i'm gonna kick these dogs out dogs (laughs) man that's funny keenan achilles dancing like not long ago he had to wear I, a boot. He had wore a boot for two months. Yeah, I feel like dancing. if we would have kept on the ab roller thing, Glenda might have come up with a, some sort of funny experience with the ab roller too. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, oh, I've done Keenan. lots of stupid things. Yeah. During <laughs> Keenan. I broke my nose yeah. horsing around with a field hockey stick. Oh. I had to get my nose packed. That was disgusting. I chipped my tooth in there. Okay, stop. Go. <laughs> So one of, one of the points that Luke made was that Jesus came to not only save us from death, but he also uh, came to give us an abundant life. Uh, so how has God given you an abundant life? Mm. 
I was struck, um, Levi, with just, I would even just say, just keep it really basic, is just forgiveness and the freedom that comes through that. Um, I can remember, I don't know, just carrying weight I, and burdens from past mistakes, uh, past regrets, past experiences. And I can remember just Jesus, just like literally, there was like a lightness in my life. And I think that's something I got to continually come back to. But there is a freedom where it's like, you don't have to be defined by your old life. You don't need to be defined by your past. Like that's mm -hmm. the gospel. You have been set free. And uh, that's something that we got to keep coming back to. So even just mm -hmm. that at a basic level um, has, has given me uh, life and life in abundance. I would start with. Yeah. I often wonder if it's like looking through it's, like of abundant that word is talking about it's like if you were standing in your house and you're just looking through the glass into your yard and life experienced but it isn't that it's like entering the presence of like the real things like so I always think maybe it's not all just sweetness but it is all abundance I don't know if that makes a difference somehow in my mind maybe it doesn't make sense when I say it out loud but it's like I get to experience life in a, f a fullness mm -hmm. I think that is different and, and sometimes that's deep sorrow and sometimes it's lots of times it's deep joy or contentment but I'm, I'm wondering what that word abundance all holds yeah I would that's actually I was the the picture of the looking in that I would be that's where I went I look at my life and be like okay if if abundance if we look at our lives and try to pick out the abundance I would have to say like I like that Luke started with forgiveness. You could probably like close the book there. Perfect. That like is abundance mm. enough, but uh, the, a life of abundance, what is that like? Like I think that a life with God is abundance. We, you, you, you noted, you mentioned these five sort of attributes of the shepherd bring abundance, you know, that, that would bring abundance without those, I would say would be like a, a lack of, uh, would be a missing something, uh, but the life good, with yeah. with Christ brings abundance, and I think those caring, leading, guiding, protecting, pursuing, uh, you know, those providing, those would be like life that supplies abundance. And I think I could make, I could write a book. That'll be chapter fourteen of my book. Of like, oh, really? That book, Mark. Yeah. Man, you when you struck me was just the. Imagine we talked about Jesus in that way, that if you don't have Jesus, you're missing out on life. Like you don't yeah. have to You're talk watching about from him. the inside. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like we always associate Jesus with like rule following and boring, right? And it's like, sorry, Mark, just when you said that, like I'm lack of or missing out on, it's like so true. That struck yeah. me. But really, Psalm, like when you talked about Psalm 23 and tied that in, Luke, like I think that those pieces that he's he's talking about are is like abundance so he he gives he leads me to rest mm -hmm. even in even in the shadow of yeah, death yeah, yeah. you are there and so really what he's talking about isn't just like oh i get all these good things that i get when i get god but really he's talking about like the death like the valley of the shadow of death you pay, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies like this is like the presence of god in all of these things so that passage is interesting I mean, we, we talk about it like it's a peace passage, but it's also saying, like, in my fear, this is what I have. Right, and then yeah. my cup overflows, right? So you get all of these pictures of this, like, overflowing, overwhelming picture, this goodness and mercy that's going to follow you. But it's all just really leaning in. Hmm. I think of abundant life. Um, oft I think often when I think of abundant life, I start to go towards, like, uh, physical objects or... I don't know, worldly gains. And I'm like, yeah. you know, I, there's almost like this, I don't know if I actually have an abundant life because I don't have all of the latest right. blah, 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 blah. But when you look back, I think it's always easier to look back on your life to see the abundance. Um, so look at, look back on your mm. life and you're like, okay, these are the times when I have really given everything over to God and allowed him to lead me mm. and then measure the abundance that you had there. Like, I think about all the times when I went overseas and I had to give my whole life over to God and let him lead everything. It's like I've laid mm. everything on the table and su such an abundant life. Th those times, like I just, 
can't believe how amazing those times were. But I had to give up on a lot of my worldly <laughs> desires. I had to give up on having stable internet connection, having a, a great place to lay my head. Like I had to give up things that I would regularly say in the North American mindset that that's right. part of the abundant life. Right. Uh, to actually have abundant mm. life because I gave everything over. So and really you had to find like weak, like you had to, you, you weren't reliant on yourself. And really that's why yeah. in weakness we have strength, right? Yeah. Interesting. Definitely. Do you think, uh, so because we have the Lord or because we know the Lord, does that mean that we'll lack nothing? If I think as I was sharing in my message there on Sunday that like, it's definitely a, a struggle at times where I feel like, I, I can't say it, but I mean, this is the gospel that's proclaimed, right? Like that because Jesus has come, we can find contentment in him, right? So I think I need to allow and let the spirit of God, because that which will lead me to contentment in my life, I guess. Uh, the one thing that comes to mind for me is just like forgiveness. Like um, there's freedom, right? Um, just in being forgiven that my past doesn't define me my mistakes don't define define me we all have regrets we've all done things that we regret and wish we could take back and that's the beauty of the cross so i think there's a there's a freedom uh for me personally in just being forgiven <laughs> that there is a contentment there there's a release there um so in that sense i'd say that is one way in which i experience uh the lacking of nothing because i've been set free so <laughs> Awesome. What about for you, Glenda, uh, Mark? Do you feel like uh, because you have Jesus, do you feel like you lack nothing then? I think your circum circumstances are interesting. So I think that there's sometimes circumstances where I, you need things and you're asking them of God. So, but I, 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 contentment doesn't seem to depend on that. I mean, people who have everything aren't necessarily content so i i think that there is a difference i don't know is there a difference between circumstances and yet that my peace actually resides somewhere else hmm. because it resides like in this relationship or in this different kind of space i don't know that's good gun it's like you you don't really feel that peace or content right now because you know whether it's busy or life seems to be chaotic but there's this like how well, do you I would, describe I would say peace? I would say different. I would say I do feel at peace and contentment, even though okay. I like I would ask God for lacking. But when you read the psalm, it says like I don't lack anything. Right. So the foundation has got to. But there, I do find that times like I am asking God for the things that I think are lacking. Maybe I don't know. Is that lack of faith? Is it lack of contentment? I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I I would say the same thing. I. Uh, there's like over time, if I look back, I think uh, I had what I needed. God gave me what I needed. Like the psalmist, like uh, if we, if, you know, going back to the shepherd piece, uh, knowing that, that he's the shepherd, he gives us all of those things. He supplies all of the things for us, the leading and the carrying and the, you know, all of those five things. Then I think I can look back over my story and say, yeah, actually, I, I do, I do lack nothing. Mm -hmm. But in the yeah. moment, I would say I can't always recognize that the shepherd has given me the good things, uh, the good things or the things that I need. I can't always observe them as good or as bringing me joy or as what I need. But I think that when I look back over the story, my story, the whatever, uh, uh, I can see God giving me so I lack nothing. Yeah, that's um, good, Mark. But really I think good. in the moment... Uh, it, it, we don't, we can't always, um, that's, I'm not sure if that's, that's my nature. That's probably maybe my problem too is, uh, but part of human nature is not always being able to see the, the, the hope in every situation, the, like the God pieces, the lacking nothing, the, what he's actually giving us in the moment until we're after the moment. Mm. We can't see all of the pieces. We can't actually, we don't have the same perspective. I think that's you, the analogy came out as the shepherd, right? Right. He can't see that sheep can't always see, but the shepherd knows what's good for them. Yeah. I feel like it's because uh, God is guiding you in that moment, but we, we can't actually see that he's guiding you. Um, you know what I mean? Like it's, he's walking right alongside you, but you don't know that in that moment. So it might feel like you are lacking. 
Um, I think I think maybe that's why it's really important to tell each other the stories, mm. because really that is like when you are looking back and saying, "But I've seen the faithfulness of God." Where right, in so. this in this need, He met me. So I wonder if that's. I always have this picture of like this stream that's running towards me, and then I'm you're, I'm standing like in this stream, and and just below me is this waterfall with this pool, and this stream that's coming toward me is this mercy and grace that is fresh and new every morning, like Lamentations mm -hmm. tells us. Um, so this is this mercy that is new every morning that's running towards me. It's not recycled in any way. It's constantly fresh and new, and so it, the I think the contentment comes in trusting that that stream is without end. And mm -hmm. then also looking back at this river or this lake below me, which is God's faithfulness, saying, mm -hmm. and look at all of this that he has provided. So I wonder if um, that's where we can find contentment. Mm -hmm. Interesting picture. I feel like if, if Jesus is guiding us, um, how, how do we know that he is guiding us? Like this is the question people ask all the time, but how do you know that it's God leading you? Yeah. Which is interesting to me, eh? That that's such a common question all the time. Why? Um, I mean, without sounding like pretentious, I think sometimes it's pretty clear. Hmm. Like as a Christian, like I'm not saying that I'm led all the time, but it's like if I feel convicted or challenged, you know, like... Yeah. I wonder if people think that it's that conviction is God leading. I like that. That's a good thought. Yeah. Eh? But I think people think that's like your own mind or morality mm -hmm. and conscience, like then it is really like God leading you. It's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I think we complicate it sometimes. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. I agree. I think it's... Don't you think so too? Like in my... Yeah. I don't know. I also don't think that... I don't think that um, God only leads in like a, this narrow, tiny little... If right. you don't hit it, if you don't hit the nail right on the top, it's going to bend over and you're not going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't think God leads like that. I, I, I can't... That's too hard for me to think that God only leads in one little narrow... If you right. don't listen to this... If you miss it, you're going to miss his calling and it's only this big. I can't believe like, that. Yeah. That would make my life pretty hopeless then. Yeah, man. You, you have to find this one little way. It's like a needle in a haystack. It's I don't, I don't think that that's how God leads. I you think know, I heard, I heard somebody say once that the way God mostly leads is a field. And so we think, we always think that it's a path, that like it's this little narrow path and that he's leading us. But most of the time God's saying, here's the parameters of life, of, of right. goodness. And pick you get to pick right. these, all these things are for you so you pick so most of life is a field and we think and every once in a while god gives you a path like I actually want you to go here and you see evidence of that in scripture like where sure. they would lay hands on somebody and he would have a call like they would have a call most often it was that but usually the church was not that usually the church was look there's all these things you pick like this is these are the things that we know to do so just do them right and I think that that's, so that's where I would go. Same thing. If we, if we want to, to um, tailor our lives, model our lives, chase our lives, chase the shepherd, we don't always know exactly, like the shepherd isn't going to le only lead us into one little corner of the field. Right. That's good. Mark. Like exactly what you said. I think that when we, if we, if our desire is to live in the abundance that the shepherd gives, we have to believe that the shepherd's abundance isn't only going to come if we go through this little gate uh, in terms of like the direction for our lives. Do, like I know there's like the reference to the narrow gate and the wide, like I get that's different in terms of like calling no, in our smart. lives. Well, right. Like I think that's I think different. it's true. The I mean, really, the our, shepherd is leading to the field and it might be a path that's getting there. But you get to this point where he's like, these things are all good. You pick. Yeah, this is and, and we can't. I think it kills our like, it kills our like uh, uh, um, um, assurance that we're following him if we if we are always guessing whether or not yes. we've, hit, we've hit the little the little yeah. mark the little target at four hundred yards <laughs> with the twenty two. We we I think he gives us like a way bigger scope of uh, of grace in that. Follow me, 
follow, follow me. Yeah. And, and yeah. I don't, I think even in, in like his instruction, you know, love, love other people, love me, love others. Right. Mm-hmm. I think like, uh, it's the same question with uh, hearing God. Like, how do we know if God is speaking to us? How do we know if God is leading us? Um, hey, nice to see you back there. Um, uh, but like, seriously, the same, same question. Is that just mm-hmm. me talking? Uh, or is that just me leading? Or is that right. God leading? So that's, right. I don't know. That's what's yeah, I think that's. I think that's head. the big question. I think that's what people are asking. Is this me finding my own way forward and me um setting the parameters or is it really god i think that's what people are asking too or what we all ask but i think that um uh, i think that that's like the, the like for our whole lives like i think that when mm-hmm. we start to, to talk about our lives and and living lives as people that are following christ that like do i have to pray every single decision that i go out of my door i leave my door okay it's like next decision next no but i can pray at the beginning of the day like hey like and all through you know throughout the day at different times i pray that god opens doors and i pray that as you know in relationship or in you know opportunity Mm -hmm. that i'm continuing to see those opportunities uh and god's continuing to give me like eyes for those things or a heart for those things and we pray that it's i pray that it's the same heart that he has for the things but that I keep seeing those things. So I wonder if that's similar to like knowing whether or not God is leading us to these things is we, I think at some point have to trust that we put our lives in his hands. He is leading us into those things. He is opening the doors Mm. to those things. I think really the answer is yes. Like God is, God is leading you actually. So you are involved in this process. God is leading. That's a good point. (laughs) So that's, so yes, it's you. And yeah. yes, it's God. Yeah. What's the what's the verse there in Proverbs? Uh, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're All acknowledging your God in your him. life, yeah, yeah. yeah. Proverbs three. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah, it's I an interesting that. word too. Hey, acknowledge in that. I know. Verse. I love that. Mm. It's like a nod, like, "All yeah. right, yeah." I know, like, I know you you exist. You're real. You got me right. Yes, mm. the existence and real. It's just an acknowledgement. Well, what's the did first you, step? Is yeah, and you talked about that. Um, he knows us. The shepherd knows us. Right. He's got us. He, he, you can acknowledge that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's good. Well, also acknowledge that he wants to mold us and change us, and he wants to lead us. Like, I just think knowing all those things, it doesn't mean that it's tricky. Because God isn't tricky. He's not going to say, oh, haha, I'm going to give this to... <laughs> I'm going to give this to Luke and see how he does with this one. Ha ha ha. Here you go, Luke. Don't trip over this one. God's not tricky. Like, right. It's not at the heart of a father or a shepherd. The shepherd isn't like going to lead them to a place and be like, Hey, this whole area is dangerous over here, yeah. but this is the good area. So let's see how they do. This is a yeah. test. They're going to, I don't, I just don't think that's the heart of God. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. yeah the, the trickster stuff, but we get, I, th- I think we get sucked into that a little bit. Like even, even me personally with, like I remember hearing like, oh, I prayed and, and I couldn't find my keys for my car and I, I prayed about it and boom, all of a sudden it just appeared. Mm-hmm. And like, you don't want to discount people's stories with that. But sometimes I'm like, okay, why is God concerned about finding your keys? And he's not concerned about uh, healing a person that we've been praying for for a couple months. You know what I mean? And then, but just that reminder that he's not trying to play games. Or he's not trying to trick us, right? But it's those stories that sometimes I feel like, what are you so doing? You, so are we, you shouldn't pray, we shouldn't pray. We shouldn't pray. Pray about finding saying. keys. Right. No, not what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I think it's easy when we hear stories like that to think that God is a trickster mm. God. That's what, like I've been lost down that path, Glenda. Yeah. Like mm. that's what I'm saying. I'm just. I see. Yeah, I'm saying we should be praying for those things and we should be celebrating those things when God shows up yeah. in those little ways. We should be celebrating. But I think it's easy for me to go. Well, mm. why did you show up here and not here? It seems way more important that you should show up here than finding somebody's keys or whatever it is, right? You know, that's inter- I always think that's such an interesting thing because I, I say that. People say that all the time, like, or wait, like, does God show up in these places? Mm-hmm. It's interesting because, like, what he's saying is I'm there. Right, like, true, I, I'm, true. I'm the shepherd. I have led you there. So I, I think that all the time, too. So I was thinking the other day. So I really think, like, that God is absent. 
when he doesn't, if I do, it doesn't show up, but what do I mean by show up? Like he right. hasn't answered the things the way I think yeah, he yeah. should, or I don't know. I always wonder about that. What does that mean? I guess that's right. Aiglana. When we say show up, we're almost meaning answer the way I want you to answer. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, when I was taking this class too, the prof said, um, I do not want to hear from you. And I do not want to hear you, hear you praying and saying, like, God, we just hope that you will finally move or intervene in this way. He is right. always doing those things. Mm. So don't, pr don't pray and think like he isn't, and you just need him to come in and swoop in. Right. Like, he is always present. He's always there. So what are the things that you know for sure about God? Like, you have to remember that when you pray too. So I've, I've been, I've personally been like convicted or challenged about this. Hmm. God, are you going to show up? Right. I don't know what I think about that. Yeah, I know. I don't either. That's a challenge with you. Because I feel like uh, biblically there are, there's pieces where we can know that there's guaranteed encounters with God. And mm -hmm. there is times when God is not near to people. Um, does that mean that God is everywhere? Yes. Uh, but I don't think that, um, like, why would there be a verse where two or more are gathered? Uh, he is with them, like in, in the name of Jesus, then he is with them. That goes against saying, well, he's everywhere. You know what I mean? So like, uh, but does know. it? Because when yeah. you think of that verse, is that what it's saying? Is it saying that God's presence is guaranteed when there's two people? Or is it saying that there's an, like, it's an acknowledgement that in the unity of people is God? I think it's a guaranteed encounter with God that when hmm, two or more are gathered uh, in his name, he will be present. Uh, hmm. Same thing with uh, suffering uh, for his name's sake. Um, I feel like that is like, there's these guaranteed encounters with God that uh, when we are in the word, that's a guaranteed encounter with him. Um, I think when, when he is everywhere, uh, when we talk about that, all powerful, all knowing everywhere, I, I always think of it as he is without borders. Um, when we invite him into our, into our hearts that, that he is with us, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't know what I think about that. Like, very interesting. I'm not saying I fully disagree. Mm. Uh, just. Yeah, it's thought provoking for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but the pictures we have of God as like a shepherd or like those, those aren't things that are gone. No. Like he's, he is always the shepherd. I just think of like Job. Um, like it didn't seem like he was walking along. Like he didn't give up on Job, but he definitely gave him over for a little bit of time uh and wasn't close to job like he wasn't uh, you know what i mean i think that i've like yeah, when I you're talking i'm like man there feels like there's so many places uh where god shows up to like individuals mm -hmm. you know what i mean like that it, it for me it wouldn't only be uh two or two or three are gathered for mm -hmm. me there'd be also be a place where i would say he, he actually is there for the individual person. I feel like the, the Bible like is littered with God showing up to individuals, but I'm a, but, but I, I do. I, but then in like, in like wrestle with it, is it, is the scripture yeah, saying good, that when yeah, two or three are gathered, he'll for sure show up. And I would want to, I would want to hold on to the promise that when one is gathered, he'll for sure show up. I don't know. Like, well, uh, look at the again, Israelites kept yeah. wandering and wandering and going right. away and going away, and he kept pursuing. And yeah. Luke talked about that. He yeah. is a God who pursues. He will pursue you. He will not abandon you. He pursued yeah. us to the cross. He's gonna. And that picture of that, like that, he talked about that girl who was picked up from the yeah. alley. I mean, this is. I think that's like he's gonna keep pursuing because he keeps leaning in. He's like, well, then I'm gonna lead you this way. Well, now I'm gonna make another way this way. And so I don't yeah. think that's the absence of God. I think that's the continual presence of God. Huh. Like, I, I think that obviously there's a, a personal, like God does pursue you. Um, I just think if there's guaranteed encounters with God, that means that there's times when God isn't present. Uh, and so... 
Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really, know in the I life of a believer, you have the Holy Spirit, though, at the indwelling of the Spirit of God. Yeah, Amen. God. I think, but I just no, don't I, think. I don't think that's true. I think like you have the, you bear the fullness of the image of God everywhere you go. But I think there's times like it talks about the indwelling. We always have God's presence with us, the indwelling of the Spirit. But then there's also a filling of the Spirit, which mm-hmm. seems to be not like you have to let the spirit fill you paul says be filled with the spirit right so i think mm-hmm. there's a there's a difference for sure you're indwelled all the time with god's presence but then there's these times where it's like you're filled and there's like yeah there's a show up there i feel like it, yeah. i feel like there's a distinct show up there perhaps but do you think it's a little bit like you know when you walk down question. a path like you're walking down a path of life and most of the time, like you are walking, you're walking with God, you have the spirit. And then every once in a while, it's like God picks you up and places you on a different part of the path. And I feel like that's every once in a while, the Holy Spirit does that, like mm-hmm. just comes and places you in a different spot on the path. And that, I don't know why or how, but he, he just does like, but most, but, most of our life is this long obedience in the same direction, but every once in a while, God intervenes and fills you with the spirit of God and sets you in a different part. Mm-hmm. That's what I, that's how it makes sense in my brain. So for me I'm, be to pray showing up for God to show up, I'd be, sh- I'd be praying like a filling of the spirit. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not saying God's not, I'm not saying God's not present. God's always present working out his will, but I'm praying for like, man, I want to see you move in a powerful way. Right. I want to see the spirit of God work. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great Maybe way to reason that out. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Sorry, Mark. Uh, what a, what a that's, this is, this is like a really interesting because it feels like we kind of this, like we, he's present, but uh, not always working, not always like or directly working. I don't like, I, like, mm. uh, you know what does that like does that, I don't know if that's a clear question um i I want to believe and I want to that my shepherd let's use that terminology because we're coming off that terminology is always present so uh psalm twenty three he he's there he helps me to be yeah. calm be he's present in the bad in the good psalm twenty three is pretty clear um I don't know that, that feeling. I have to. I'm like wrestling with the. I. 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 I the showing up. That's like the distinction between being present and showing up. I, I'm like wrestling whether or not that's actually a distinction, or whether we're right. like my, my life actually. If if it wasn't for the presence of God, would be fully lost without Him showing up in my Agreed. life. Agreed. Fully lost. He pursued and has now filled me. It's the, yeah. So Because the I, one I, command that we're given again and again is to stay, right? Like I read Philippians 4 this morning and it's like, stay, stay in it. So that's the one yeah. thing we have to do. Just stay, like right. follow, yeah. keep abiding. That's your one thing, but God does all the rest of the things. And I think he's the one who stays, like he's the one who keeps us. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not kept because I'm so good and faithful. No. That, yeah. That's, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Uh, or that, that those are good words in terms of what I'm trying to uh, wrestle, trying to figure out, or trying to like line up my theology is to say, actually, I think that's exactly what I believe is that uh, he's pursued me and continues to make like to be in that pursuing presence. The he's the spirit filled. That's how I, like I, I I hope that that was always like that that I can't. Uh, I can't, um, or I don't lose that when I don't acknowledge or ask him to show up. You know, is that, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm trying to wrestle with the, are there, uh, are there times when, even when I don't ask, he, that, does that mean he's not showing up? Or am I, when I, if I don't pray constantly, does that mean I'm not acknowledging him in my life? And that means he's not there. But when I do, <laughs> then he shows up. When Back I, to but, that word, acknowledge. Yeah, I was thinking that too, yeah. Uh, but I want I want to, I want to, I, be, I want to believe that I, I acknowledge him, have acknowledged him, part of my life, controls my life, does that. <laughs> he mm. does that. I can, he's like, I, I can trust that that's the case. Uh, mm. I, I want to believe that that's the case mm. all the time. 
So from this convo, are you going to continue to pray God show up? Or are you taking that out of your vernacular? No, I've, I've actually been, you know what? I've been actually catching myself when I believe that or really? when I am praying that. And and not saying that, like, not again, asking what you're saying, Luke, like, God, would you in this way, like intervene in this way? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. like asking all the things, like I can ask a, a dad, like, how about this? And how about this? And how about sure, this? Right. Like, I feel total freedom to do that. But it has made me realize the way I say, I, like, I assume, assume, I don't know. I, I kind of put into my words that he isn't, he actually isn't there sometimes. So right, yeah. it's just, it's just been catching myself in my mm-hmm. theology. Lived out so, maybe. The, so maybe it's not even as much uh, the words as it is our like, um, like uh, uh, thinking our theology, uh, uh, understanding our theology. Our words might be similar, but we've like, yeah. I get it. I get that you're here all the time. I, I'm like begging, pleading, you know, I'm asking, and, and I, mm. in fact, I think the, you know, when we read through the Lord's Prayer, or whatever, like, there's all, there's places where there's asking, <laughs> when you, like, there's places where they're pleading, you know, if, right, if, yeah. if I think about my son, Jesus modeled that, and, and, yeah, exactly, yeah. In the, yeah, exactly, in the garden, wherever he pleads for the, like, so I think there's places for that, but, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know that when we do that, we, I, I, I I don't want to draw the line to say if we don't do that, then I'm discounting that he's present or that he's acknowledging my prayer mm-hmm. or that he's acknowledging my need for him or that he's acknowledging my fill up. So it, fill up with the Holy Spirit. The only when I say, Hey, will you show up? I hope you, sh-. that's, I think that's too cut and dry. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, that, then I'm siloed my life with God and said, the only when I ask, I don't know that I don't right. feel like I don't have that. I don't feel like I have that power that, uh, I don't, that's not what I want, but that's not what my it's so, language is. It's so interesting. We're talking about these I ams too. They're like such ordinary things. Like I am the bread of life. Like this was just a meal, a simple meal shared with bread and wine and right. a, a regular thing. And I, and I am the good shepherd. Like everybody knew, knew he, like a shepherd was an ordinary thing. So it's been making me realize like how, I don't, I'm not sure how that like, but translates to like, I am your supper time like i am your provision in this way but it's just such ordinary things so the the assumption is like this presence this continual presence it feels like your light i am your light right yeah yeah exactly (laughs) yeah yeah it's interesting i think those are good good. uh yeah good question there from the professor I love Levi how you stirred that one, brother. That was a good. I I just I still I I just don't know. I don't think I would stop praying that the Holy Spirit would fill the fill the room. Um, I feel like I pray that over every youth night. Yeah. Um, that He'd be working in people's hearts and. Yeah, I. I get. It doesn't mean we really get that God is walking alongside me and working in my heart and guiding me, and He's showing up in ways that even when I haven't invited him into or acknowledged him, he is still working and guiding yeah, me. Yeah, hundred percent. But I feel like that, that doesn't, for me personally, I don't believe that he's always right beside me, walking alongside me. I believe that I have access to God, that I know that when I come to him by reading his word, when I pray, when I take communion, uh, when I'm gathered with others in worship, when I invite the Holy Spirit in, I know that those are guaranteed ways that I have access to God yeah. by the fact that his word has spoken that to me. So if there Is are that those Because you're acknowledging ways, him though in those ways? I think so, or, yeah. But like, so I get it. So I get the personal, but... And inviting, inviting him to be in relationship or else why would we say we're spending time with God? Like... He's always, like, we're always spending time with God. I know I'm even shifting my thinking about this. Maybe I'm going too radical these days, but I'm like thinking my, the time that I spend with God isn't just with my Bible open, with my eyes closed in prayer. The right. time I spend with God is every single minute of every day. All of my day is filled with God. It isn't just, there's times where I stop and I acknowledge like his presence or I feel it in a different way or I spend time communicating, but his presence is... That's what I'm, this is what I was trying to, I think that's, that's where I would be. That's where I feel like that's where my 
theo- theology has come to is that that that's how I tr- I want to live to acknowledge that all day. I, I don't I don't discount the gathering, the sitting in prayer, the journaling, the reading scripture, the all of those things. I think <clears throat> I would agree with you, uh, Levi. I think those are like times, but but I'm not times when God shows up. Sorry, uh, but I'm not. But I I would hope that in all of my every day. So uh, going to Costco, meeting people, going to the gas station and seeing somebody, going to the grocery store, going, uh, getting a phone call from somebody, somebody showing up at the office, somebody emailing a phone call uh, from random person is not random. I, 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 that, that those are like God ordained places that we've walked into and he's opened doors. And I, and that that's the presence of God in my every day. And I pray that I continue to have eyes and ears and a heart to hear and know those situations so that I can acknowledge him showing up. Right. Maybe my theology is too sideways for this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I've tried to create something that's convenient for me. I, I don't know. No, I'd be fully there with you, Mark. I would just add that praying for the Holy Spirit to move powerfully is not wrong. No, I, I, I would disagree with the professor to say, stop praying, show, <laughs> ask God to show up. I would disagree with that. Yeah, you I would. Th- eh? I would. I think because that postures ourselves in a way of dependency and being like, Lord, I need you. It's an acknowledgement. It's a. Yeah, I think he's just saying don't pray like assuming that God isn't present, I think right. is what he's saying. That's, yeah. So cause, because we'll say, but like when I pray for, for situa- or people who have like wandered from the faith or who don't know, like don't have relationship with Jesus, then I pray like God keep pursuing them. So I'm. Right. It, it reminds me like he is, he, he is, is at yes, work. Yeah, yeah. He is. So it's just, it's just, it's a little shift in my head, but it is. And at first I didn't like it either that he said I was like. But no, I like it. I like. I'm, the I'm starting yeah. to like just realize, acknowledge like the presence of God. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe. The oh, I, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I yes, just don't Levi. Know. I love the stir up. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I'm just reading through. Like, there was a at the Canadian Youth Workers Conference this past year. John Thompson's uh, Thompson from Sanctus Church spoke oh, yeah. about these guaranteed encounters with God and that really shifted my theology on how I view my encounters with God. And he referenced Ephesians 4 30 about grieving the spirit. Um, and how, when we grieve the spirit, we actually are kind of putting a, a roadblock or like a, a wedge mm-hmm. between us and the spirit, which uh, makes it hard for us to encounter the spirit. So when we yeah. live in a life that's contrary to uh, holiness, then we are kind of putting this wedge. That doesn't mean that we haven't given our lives over or at one point invited the spirit into our lives, but there is a disconnect and there is almost a, a non-presence then uh, of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so I totally, I don't know, I get both sides. Like I get, I get what you're saying. Uh, I think there's an importance to acknowledging God when we begin praying, inviting the spirit to work. Uh, and yeah, but I, I don't know. I think that there's these very guaranteed ways that we can encounter God. That's, that's what I, I don't know. That's what I believe. <laughs> Man, Scott McKnight wrote, wrote the best book on the Holy Spirit that I just finished. What was it it's called? Fantastic. One spirit. But he actually believes that you don't get the Holy Spirit until you're baptized. Like literally, 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 wow. That's when he would say you is the indwelling of the spirit of God. Comes at baptism, not at a baptism. conversion. No. I have it's, a book. A, it's he's a little it's a little grayer on the he, edges, but yeah, the book is excellent. It's only one little part he talks about that. I have a book on the Holy Spirit on my shelf to read that I went to a conference with some guys last year that wrote a book. He uh said there's there's too many extremes in our belief of the Holy Spirit and so and uh, they would uh, he would have grown up and worked in uh, an extreme sort of understanding of the Holy Spirit uh, theologically and so he partnered with a friend 
uh, who is also a theologian, uh, and they wrote a middle of the road. They said, we actually believe that there's, there's needs to be like a, an understanding about the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. that is not so extreme. Yeah, um, and so actually I ordered the book before it was published mm-hmm. and now I got it just bef- actually just before we went sort of into hiding COVID hiding, but, um, this, uh, so I have it on my shelf in the, like, this needs to need to read and you guys are inspiring me to read <laughs> about the Holy spirit. Thank you. God has used you where three and four are gathered. God used you to inspire yeah, me to read about. I think I, I, do, I was thinking like, I think both these things are true. Like when Levi yeah. says those things, I'm like, yes, for sure. That's true. But I think, I think what this week was talking about is, and I think Psalm 23, your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my all life. All days, yeah. Not yeah and days. I will live yeah. in the house of the Lord yeah, forever. So I think he, not only do we need to do things to show up, but he is pursuing us. Hmm. Well, you, that was Luke's final point, so, right? Yeah, but, God is a pursuing God. God, God will locate God. you. Yeah. Is it, would that have been the one, like he brought up a few different things about who the, sh- the shepherd was, right? A, one who leads, cares, provides, protects, Protect. and then landed Pursue. with pursuing. Would that be the one that uh, would be like the most, like one that sticks out the most or would be the one that you would like hold on to the most would that be how the shepherd shows up for Mm. for you that's a good question like what where is that i would say that was the one that stuck out to me that was a pursue what about you yeah i think for me too in in, like uh, i don't know if it was because that's where you landed and the sheep and i could you know you know connect with the farm not that i know anything about connecting with the farm but um purely city uh, but the something about that, something about knowing that I have a God who loves me so much yeah, to pursue me that, like, pursue me until death. Uh, that's it's hard to get past that. No, knowing that it, I, I probably in my life could make lists of places where He leads and cares and provides yeah. oh, and protects. Yeah. But <laughs> in terms of like the biggest sort of this is the one, probably pursue just because yeah. of mm. like how, how how on earth as a father, as a mother, as a parent, Mm -hmm. loving your child, you know, you think you love your child like crazy and, you know, hope that, or as a a spouse that you would pursue or love that to that end. But he did it. (laughs) That's what he did it for me. That's what he did as a shepherd. I don't know. That's pretty sweet. Mark, that story about the RCMP guy. I've never, like I heard that about four years ago. I share it every grad retreat. So Levi's heard it four times. He, we were listening to it this this week uh, at the dinner table, and Jordan's like, "Not like Luke doesn't speak about this all the time." And then I was like, "Where have I heard? Like, wh- has he shared this with the church before?" But it's grad <laughs> retreats. It's the every grad year retreat. grad yeah, retreats. Because I said the young adults, and then some of the young adults were like, "I've never heard that before." I'm like, "Oh, it's because it's the if you've gone on the grad retreat, you've heard it." But I mean, every time that story gets me, man, and and. That's awesome. Yeah, just that's is that the piece shit. that would stand out to you, Luke, or which of those things? Like, as you yeah, were studying, I think for me personally, that that story just came to mind, and yeah, that was it. The pursuing, it the, the pursuing, pursuing of God. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Do you think that that's like really the beginning of the word and the end of the word? That's what happens. We get it begins with the presence of God and it ends with the presence of God, like walking with or being with us, like him us call him calling us home and then the start of the walking in the garden so i wonder if that's really the, kind of the our heart's cry mm. Mm. you mean to be pursued to to be to understand like what it means the presence of god to have yeah. him with us and i think that's kind of what you're talking about but i was thinking really this is the we're image bearers this is the beginning of the word and this is the end of the word like revelations 21 mm. and right, the beginning yeah. part of that is i will be with you yeah yeah anyway I always think of, uh, when I think of shepherd, I think of protector that like, Mm. that really stood out to me. I mean, last week on the podcast, I shared, uh, from Lord, I need you like that song and my one defense. And I think protector just, uh, puts God who will force me to rest. Mm. He's Uh, looking after me. mm. He's protecting me. Um, yeah, that, I don't know if that just really encompasses it for me. Uh, one thing he that makes you lie down did that strike you levi like what did you think about that idea of he's making you lie down in green no like that's i feel like that is the part of the 
the psalm that actually sums up protection more than uh, he's walking through the valley of shadow death with me. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he, he's, he's protecting me so much that even before I get to all this crazy stuff, he's making me rest. Yeah. 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 That's, great. Um, That's a great thought. So the protection uh, yeah. one is huge for me too. I, I mean, all of them, like, like you, Mark, all of them would be. Yeah, definitely. But but I remember that with Paisley. I remember that time praying for her and God just, again, Glenda, when you say, how do you know, how do you hear from God or whatever? But I just remember clearly it was like a nudge of just, you need to release her to the shepherd. Huh. So like, I, I remember I was putting her to bed in her crib and that was just the story over me because I was praying for her. I'm like, yikes, man, when she grows up in these teen years. So. Um, do you think, so this week uh, in, in the message, we automatically jump to Psalm 23, um, which is talking a lot about the shepherd in the father aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, and I totally understand the Trinity. Uh, they're all like three persons in one, but this statement is from Jesus. I am the good shepherd. Uh, is there a difference there in the, the characteristic of shepherd, com- like of Jesus saying it compared to Psalm 23 and the father saying it, you know what I mean? Like these, these aspects, provider, protector, care, uh, mm-hmm. who cares for us, who uh, leads us. Often we attribute that to God, the father. And, mm, yeah. um, but Jesus is the one who's actually saying, I am the good shepherd. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure I can, I can differentiate as much, okay. uh, especially thinking I, uh, Luke didn't mention it this week, but both Jeff and Jeremy in the past weeks have talked about the, I am like from Exodus, this, that, mm-hmm. that actually that's, that's how God referred to himself. He was the, I am, I don't know how, I'm not a grammar nerd, but the, all of how that works that I feel like there's, there's already a piece that God, the father, God, the shepherd, Jesus speaking it is one more way him saying like, that's me. Like, I don't, and maybe, maybe I'm, I, I, uh, it's harder for me to differentiate that way. And maybe, maybe you're not, you're not saying we should, you're just asking if we do. Yeah, no, I don't, I'm not saying that we should. Yeah, I, yeah. I just, it's one thing that's, stuck out to me was when we talk about shepherding we automatically go back to the old testament and yeah i don't know just something stood out i would i would automatically go to jesus (laughs) you know levi it was interesting too like there's a whole other shepherd that comes out it's ezekiel 34 shepherd where god Mm -hmm. says i'm going to show up and lead my people because that. you guys have been false shepherds. Mm. So like we almost like, I was really wrestling because I, when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, not only is it saying he's the Psalm 23 shepherd, but he's also making a very controversial confrontational statement with uh, Ezekiel 34. And I wanted to talk about it, but it's just like the good old joys of sermon prep. You can't do everything. Yeah. So that's a whole nother sermon, but he's I, like I calling out the path. Pharisees, right? Glenda? Mm. He's saying, you guys have not been doing your job, so I have come to lead my people, right? It's Um, really the longest passage we have on shepherding, isn't it? Ezekiel 34. I think so, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, you haven't looked after after the weak. You haven't looked after the sick, right? You haven't gone after the lost. So I'm coming to do this, yeah. Yeah. um, uh, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey and I will judge between sheep and sheep and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David. He shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. Mm-hmm. And I, the Lord, will be their God. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, so it's so, so that statement I am in John there, I am the good shepherd. Yes, it refers to Psalm 23, but th- there's a big time confrontation with Ezekiel 34. And that's where the Pharisees were all like stirred up. Because not only is Jesus saying, I am the one that God has sent, so I'm God himself showing up here. But you guys have been not doing what mm. you can call to do. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, I don't that, know, I and that passage so links with Psalm 23, right? Because um, they, there they will lie down in pleasant places. They will feed in the lush, lush pastures. I will tend my sheep. I will give them a place right. to lie down yeah, in peace. Yeah. 
Um, I will search for the lost ones who straight away. Anyway, I love that passage. I will, mm. but it's, it's so, um, I mean, Psalm 23, I, I always, like, I wonder if David was just, I mean, David had, was saying these exact same things. This is who you are, God. Like he was acknowledging all these things about God. It's really amazing, actually. Mm. That's cool. Uh, and, and one of the things that struck me again from the I Am the Good Shepherd is that the, the Pharisees at the time were leading the flock or the sheep astray, right? And, mm-hmm. and I think one of the angles you can go with that text is just that like, well, how often as we, the church, the leaders in the church, the shepherds of the church right now, I mean, how much hurt and pain has been caused by the church? And that we need to call people back to the shepherd, recognizing that uh, like the Pharisees, we have failed to do what we've been called to do. So there's a whole, there's a whole different direction for, for another sermon another day. But um, hmm. my heart was yearning for the people who have been hurt by the, shir- the church and who have been led astray by the church. And I think that the good shepherd's calling them back to himself, you know, um, that's where I was probably on Wednesday, Levi. <laughs> In so this is the like that's the piece of sorrow in that right like that's the yeah. piece of like people haven't actually experienced um the good part of shepherding at times like they've mm-hmm. felt the gaps in the the body and they felt where actually the church hasn't like pastors really we are called to shepherd right um I mean, there's, and I think there's a difference between leadership and shepherding too. And so often I think in the church, there's such this push to lead and lead and lead that sometimes we forget it. The sheep, shepherds need to know their sheep, know what they need, care for them when they're good. But I think there's times where we've definitely dropped the ball on that. Mm -hmm. We are called to be shepherds, but we are supposed to also in that bring people to the true shepherd, which is God. Right. Amen. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for sharing uh, today. It's been so great. Uh, it's time to move to On the Lighter Side. On the Lighter Side. So today's On the Lighter Side. Uh, this past weekend, Alberta announced that uh, things are going to start reopening. Hopefully, I think this is a move that Canada uh Canada-wide is mostly going to, things are going to start to reopen, bringing in all the different feelings, feelings of maybe anxiousness, but also excitement. And then there's the fear. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts, your guys' feelings about this? It's going to be great to see people again. For sure. Uh, I will just, you know, Levi, like when we talked about lacking nothing, I, I have learned to really enjoy this time away personally. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the Lord's been calling me back to himself. Um, I have younger children, so I don't feel as like they're missing out on school or, or their friends. And I've just had this time to be with family, to be alone with the Lord. And uh, I guess that to say lack nothing, I've, I've discovered that contentment through this time. So there is a little bit of angst for me of like going back. It's like, Oh, no, here we go back into the busyness and the chaos. Um, I mean, I've been able to put Paisley to bed like six days a week, and that's something I don't want to lose. I recognize I'm probably going to have to let go of that. But anyways, brother, that's one thing that's been on my mind lately. A little bit different, I know, than, than most people. But. <laughs> but I think it brings a bit of a – there's like, a, you know, you get through this sort of two months-ish. I think it feels like – you know, 100 days, but uh, you get through this sort of two months of, of being in not knowing any future, not knowing what it's going to look like, you know, going from, you know, the weekend shutting everything to opening a few things to, you know, to maybe there'll be a hope. I mean, there's no dates. So that, that's a bit of a like, a um, you know, a fogginess or murkiness with it. But I think there's something in there that like spurs like a, we may, you know, for families with children or for teachers and that kind of stuff, we may be able to go back to school at some level in September, or there's going to be, maybe we can see some of our friends around campfires coming up in the summer. Maybe we can go camping, make it, yeah, we yeah. can put the, the boat in the lake. If that's what your thing is like, there is some hope, but I think that there would be people that are immune compromised that it's still a, I suspect there's still like a underlying current of, of a bit of, of fear or anxiety about it. Uh, a bit of like, 
uh, there's no immunization happening. There's right. no like any of that. So I, I think there's some like um, uh, a breath of fresh air or a breath of hope in it. But I bet you there's still, I would suspect uh, from what I hear, there's still an underlying current of, of trepidation about it. It yeah. seems that um, there's like not one way to feel about going into this and coming out of it. Like, yeah feel all the ways about all the things all the time there's yeah. just not one way to feel it you feel some sense of relief like oh this actually could end wow yeah. and this is and you get a picture like mark was saying right. had a picture of what this could look like but then you also have all these other things so i'm like i don't know how do you hold all those things yeah. in one hand we just do we have to so i think it's but i think people are gonna go rogue if things don't open up a little bit right. like i think just knowing that the mountains are open just in case we wanted to hike which I don't want to do, but you're not hiking. Let's be honest. No, I'm not hiking. <laughs> I feel like I that's totally, totally Southern pictures. Alberta that's to it. go rogue uh, on us. <laughs> yeah. It kind of makes me a little bit scared. Yeah, Levi, you could. Speak well, you're to that immune a com bit. Yeah. compromised, Levi. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah, being immune compromised, I've obviously got a little bit more uh, fear than the average person about when things open up, and I feel like people are already kind of. I don't know, not always obeying the rules. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not the person who's going to run around and say you have to obey all the rules. That's fine. <laughs> no, you're not. Okay. I, I mean, I'm not that person. I might be doing it in my house behind <laughs> my, my window, I'm doing it in my yelling head. at people. Just yelling through, this, through the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your mask? <laughs> I mean, I hope that everyone follows all the social distancing. Like as things relax, we still social distance and we still follow all the things, washing our hands. And yeah. uh, if people wear masks, that protects me. Like, so I wear my mask not to protect myself, but to try and protect other people. So I hope that other people do that too for me. Like, mm -hmm. I think we've done really good. And like, I think in our city and I've seen people really respect each other and love each other in this way. So mm -hmm. yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think it's been great. I think so. Well, I think that's all we got for today. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Bye, friends. See you, everybody. Bye.